What's going on, fellow humans and resellers? Desire Jennings, retoptionagency.com. That's not working right now. 22 years selling full time on eBay. Um, yeah, my redoption, redoptionagency.com hasn't been working for a couple of few weeks now. And I can't figure out why. I don't know if it's eBay changed something or network solutions that changed something, but I've gone in, messed with it, and cannot seem to get it to work. And all my, uh, I haven't lost anything. It's still, I'm still paying for the forwarding service. I don't know what's going on there. These were the Grey's Anatomy scrubs that sold on Poshmark last night. Sold for 15 So, uh, I wanted to go over a little bit about what happened yesterday with the Tanya Tucker cassettes. Since some people were seemed kind of confused in the comments with all of eBay's new issues that they're the, the, not issues but the changes they're making and then I'm going to kind of give you the show you the scenario why I say some of the things I do when it comes to how much I should be making each day because Some people out there have a hard time understanding how I can, uh, you know, they're, they're all, they're in the mindset that sales always change, except you can't know what your numbers are, blah, 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 but actually you can. It's called predictions. All businesses do it. Um, if you remember me saying on some of my past videos um, if I didn't have the shutdown overnight, I'd be doing about $200 plus more each day. And this past um, week has kind of shown you that. Um, Thursday, January 4th is when it started. 872, 889, 886, 817, 874. Now those days... I didn't have those huge shutdowns overnight. There was some little ones, maybe three to five hours, which could be either or, but there was still sales within like, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, et cetera, et cetera. So I always said, when there's that big shutdown overnight, that seems like it's like nine, 10, 12 hours that I'm being robbed of like $200 a day. And that's gone on basically the whole of 2023. Uh, if you watched yesterday's video, I let you know about the shutdown that would happen. It kind of the old way came back and I had that big shutdown. It's like two sales in 10 hours. 12, I don't remember now. So my day ended at $692. Now that's not bad, but if I didn't have that shutdown, I would have been back in that $800 range that I've been at every other day when I didn't have that big shutdown overnight. So that gives you kind of the idea of why I put some validity, is that the right word, into what I'm saying when I talk about that. Um, last night there was another shutdown, unfortunately. Um, 9 p.m. last night until 7.30 this morning, I sold two items. And those were both in the one o'clock hour. So that'd be 10 hours, two items sold, kind of almost mirroring the day before. So uh, in the projections, what I project in yesterday's video, if I had a day, if yesterday was going to pan out to before this past week, I would have a $400 day. If it would, if it panned out like the last week, only with a shutdown, then I'd be in the $600 range. I believe I said that. So I was $692. So uh, this morning we're at 10 a.m. I'm at $91. And with that shutdown, I could see that happening again, being in the $600 range. 
So that's what I mean when I have been saying I feel like I've been robbed of $200 almost every day of 2023. You just take $200 times 300 days and you can do the math there, how much money I feel these website issues have cost me. So, to give you some idea of where I'm coming from, uh, if you do question anything, and it's not for the people who are just trolls and being uh, buttheads, just the normal, you know, my normal viewers, just for you guys. Um, so let's see what the split ended up yesterday. Yeah, and that split was off uh, a little bit. 39 sold, 30 promoted, 9 organic. A 77-23 split. So. Higher than I like, but it hasn't been the highest. <laughs> uh, this morning, four items sold, all four promoted. So still starting up a little bit behind the eight ball again. Uh, about, if you saw the mornings of the days where everything was working fine, about $200 roughly behind the, behind the eight ball. So uh, we are down, but still up 10.4% from the last 30 days. All right. So I'll go ahead and start shipping as I'm talking about what happened yesterday. So what happened yesterday was I had a customer who came in. They sent me offer on seven Tanya Tucker cassettes. I accepted all the offers and they wanted a combined invoice because they tried checking out and the shipping was off. It was not giving them the shipping amount that is in my business policies, which is if I accept an offer on media, it's 425 unlimited items shipped, where if you buy my media at asking price, it's free shipping unlimited items. So it's going to be 425 unlimited items. And for some reason, it was charging them 825. So I'm not sure who, what, where, how, when, or why that happened. So they wanted me to send them an invoice. I go to send them the invoice and there's only six cassettes instead of seven. The missing one was a Tanya Tucker cassette called Soon. So I check it, it's still showing it's listed. It's going to lost. Oh, only one international overnight. Um, it's only shown one ship or one's missing. Uh, and then I realized that that's their new, eBay's new uh, offer thing they're going in. First, I want to state there, somebody had mentioned about you have to put a credit card in before you send an offer. I'm not opted into that because it would cause problems like that when it comes to people wanting to buy more than one. It would keep charging them full shipping for each one, and then I'd probably have to go back in and refund them the difference but most people won't even go through with it when they see the shipping's wrong. They're just going to say, no, that's too expensive for me and move on. So I do not opt into the, you have to put in your credit card before you make me an offer because I'm not losing sales over that. I have very little non-paying bidders, so it's no big deal to me. So I sold these L.L. Bean skates headed up to Maine sold for $75 so I'm not opted in so they can make all the offers they want the problem that happened yesterday was only one of those items is set up for that new eBay change which is it stays active until you buy the item so here's my problem with that too and i'll get into i'll get into that 
So when I go to send the invoice, that one's missing. And um, I had to tell them, uh, go ahead and pay. You should be able to pay on your end with the Tanya Tucker soon cassette included in that. And if the shipping is off, I will refund you the difference. Let me see if it was off. I didn't even check and it, they didn't email me back. So let me see what it ended up charging them. through here and take this stuff off Poshmark that's on Poshmark. All right. So let me click on it. So all of them are there and it only charged them $4.25. So it was correct. So that's good. Oh, but it didn't include the soon. It did not include it. One, two, three, four, five, six... So it didn't work. So it, he only paid for six. It did not put the seventh one. Oh, it put it separate. Okay. So that's the problem. That's what I was worried about. So it put it separate. Instead of putting it in with a combined invoice, it charged him separate and charged him another four twenty five shipped shipping. So now I got a refund for that four twenty. 425. So hopefully Adrian caught that and put it all into one. Thing. This is the problem that's going to scare away buyers when it comes to multiple orders. Shipping discount 4.25. Because with this new setup, there's no way I can send them a correct invoice when eBay shipping is not working and not putting the combined shipping rates as they're supposed to be. So they have been refunded now. So that's only going to hurt sales in the long run. They need to get the, the business policies to check out the shipping part fixed. Because if the person can't see the true shipping charges, and this person had to email me and say, hey, do you give a discount on shipping? So that that's the biggest problem with eBay right now as a whole is multiple orders. They, are, they have totally uh, destroyed the multi-order uh, platform on eBay with all these changes and issues going on. It's been totally annihilated. Nobody can really tell if you have multiple orders unless they put one in cart. And from what I understand, it does tell you, hey, if you buy another, you get free shipping, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't tell you if you send an offer, you only get the, you know, you still get discounted shipping. It's just different pricing. It's been totally just the only the only part where it's not destroyed is when it's working. If somebody adds one to cart, paying my full asking price, and then they add more and it's free shipping. When it comes to offers, it's going to muddle the whole order and just make it in it just make it a. It's almost setting it back to pre-business policy days on eBay, which was what, early 2000s? So it's almost taken, taken the platform backwards in that form. Almost eliminating the multi-order platform as a whole. Not as a whole, but a, a good chunk of it. I'm just trying, I'm just going through it all in my head to see if there's 
other options, something I'm missing, et cetera, et cetera. So with this new way that's going to be, say all seven of them was set up to stay active until they paid for them. Then it looks, will it, my question would be, since there was one and it was not added into the combined invoice, will it combine them? Can the buyer make offer on seven items? They're still listed. So I can't send an invoice. I can't send an invoice. That's what, at least as the way it's set up yesterday, I cannot send them an invoice on offers, at least from what I've seen, unless there's something new that's been added that I've missed yet. I cannot send them an invoice saying, hey, you bought all seven of these because it hasn't ended them yet. So from my end, they're not sold yet. They're not sold until they're paid for. So I can't send you an invoice. All I can do is say, I'll have to refund you the shipping. And then my question is, will it combine them all as they check out? And will it use the proper shipping policy? Because if I look at just the situation yesterday, which is only one and it's half and half, so I can't really, or one and six, I should say, can't really give a full answer. My, from what it looks like as of right now, it would make them pay for each one individually, and I would have to go in and refund four twenty-five on six of the seven orders. So hopefully they would be able to combine it and it would all work properly as they checked out. It's something new and changed. So there's going to be obviously growing pains and stuff to muddle through. So that's where at least I am at right now with what I've seen. The whole getting rid of non-paying bidders has opened up basically another whole universe of an issue that needs to be addressed uh, for multi-orders. Okay. I was supposed to be shipping while I was talking. I can't think, talk, and ship at the same time. <laughs> Today, please. Thank you. <coughs> Five eleven. <coughs> I talk too much. Huh? Twenty by fourteen. By five. Twenty fourteen. I think I covered that properly. I think, I think, I think. World Medicine Mission hat. So for nine bucks, headed to Guam. Guam. wrong. Let me go back and change that one because that was reading too. Five thirteen. Okay, it's five thirteen, not five eleven. 
same mount though. questions and comments yet i'll do that i will do that let me get through some of this first got a victoria secrets pink t-shirt headed to ohio sold for ten dollars so yeah. hopefully they uh Are at least aware that of where that situation would be. I don't know how far ahead the you know they think they just kind of do things and then deal with the problems as they come up. It seems like uh, Detroit Lions hat, nice distressed, sold for twelve bucks, headed to Ohio. That's two Ohio's in a row. Jan's working from like 8 to 11 today. 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Right. We got Rock and Roll Hall of Fame CD. Headed to Kentucky, sold for $8. This is my brother Daryl. This is my other brother Daryl. <laughs> Bob Newhart. I used to watch that show. Uh, Marionette. Women's shoes. So for eight bucks, headed to Alabama. I got a box for these since they're like suede looking. Didn't want them to get scratched up. Yesterday I listed one of my personal items and it sold already. <laughs> I was like, hey. It's a Captain D's bag. When's the last time anybody's ever ate at a Captain D's? One that was around here shut down a while ago. One, one. Twelve by six by six. And no, it's not going priority. Oh yeah, it is. Priority's cheaper. Okay. Let's take a first question. Uh, you are proof that having slow se selling items in your store does not bring your whole store down. If it did, you won't sell much. If it did, you wouldn't sell much. So all those people purging hundreds of items from their stores are making a mistake. They already paid for the items. They took the time to list it, list the inventory. And now they're just throwing all the future sales away. Yeah, I, I've i said my piece on this channel about that stuff. And that's where I feel a lot, some YouTube bears were giving people bad information. Uh, we have this 45 record, Billy Eckstein, 
Uh, headed to Alabama, sold for $9.95. Yay! And it just didn't sit well with me. Am I selling the 100 a, a day? No. Like I used to? No. But we're not in the perfect conditions anymore either. There's changes going on with the site. I upped my low end. Even when I upped my low end, on those days that I felt were, I'll call them 85%, maybe 80%, 10 eBay, 10 economy. How about that? 80%. In the working order, 39 sold, 42 sold, 54 sold, 49 sold, 49 sold, 42 sold. But you are correct, throwing away all that time it took to do that based on somebody's opinion. That's kind of one of the things why I always said, if we're doing this on YouTube, putting it out there, and people are looking at it as, it's almost like, and I, I don't want to, I hate to compare the two, but like if you put a public, well, it's a public figure, uh, any public figure where people are attentive to have a responsibility If you're a football player and you go out robbing homes or stealing whatever money line whatever, you know that's gonna you're gonna look bad. That, you got a responsibility with people watching you, no matter how small it may be. Just messing up one person's life by something you say is not acceptable. Oh, we got this St. Louis Rams championship hat. So for nine fifty, headed to California. And that's the biggest reason why I am always dissecting stuff live-ish. Because I'm not going to come on here and say, necessarily, unless I know 100%, this is the way. I am going to throw out different variables different opinions, different thoughts, and say, make your best judgment. This is the information I know as of right now. I would think there's probably very little I said that 100% you need to do this type of thing. I don't know if there's ever... I can't remember one off the top of my head right now. If there was, there was probably only one or two, and there was a reason why I said it. Uh, we got Your Mom Would Like Me t-shirt, sold for $13.50, headed to Ohio again. Looks like we're having a lot of, uh, a lot of the geographical thing happen uh, today so far. So, uh... And how would you, I don't know, if you're that arrogant where you can give out, oh, it needs, this is the way, blah, 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 and you have people doing it, do you really think that person's going to care when you do it, what they say? If somebody said, hey, you need to end all your items lower than $10 because it's hurting your store, they end them, their sales plummet. Then they come here and see that I'm selling a lot of stuff under that price point, And they think, oh, crap, why did I do that? Do you think that other person's going to care? They've, they're already in their arrogant set of saying this is the way it is. They're not going to care what happens to you.
you know, if I do, if I said something and it made somebody make a wrong decision because I told them to make that decision, I'm going to feel bad for it. So I'm not going to do it. I am going to throw out all the different variables and say, make your own choice. So this is my personal item I put up yesterday. It was a St. Louis Blues bobblehead, Pat Maroon, the big rig, St. Louis Blues. Bought it at a yard sale in the yard sale video last summer for $5. Same in St. Louis, sold for $27. So, bye, Pat. I'll see ya. I'm gonna put you in here first. Maybe I'll find another one this summer. And I could sell it too. <laughs> Let's do that. I'll put that around his head. Try to keep it more stable. And we'll do that tightly, kind of. That's what, like, I don't know. When I see a creator who has that arrogance about them, I mean, it just automatically turns me off for them as a person, as a whole. Just because it will lead, it can lead, let's not say it won't, it can lead to sending people down the wrong roads. Because as I've said a million times, everybody's situation is different. There are no two stores alike. There are no two business, eBay businesses alike. There are too many different variables involved from location in the country, places you can source, to how much room you have to store, to just... How much time you have to give to the business. There are just way too many variables to try to act like everybody should do something the same way. And people who don't recognize that, it's more about feeding their own ego than it is caring about what you do or how you succeed. People who say... You have to do high sell-through rate to make it work or to make a business. You can't be that person. That is one way of doing it. But it's not the only way of doing it. The people who recognize that, and they're not just steering their ship and, and inviting people aboard because they know right, and they're not taking into the account the personalities that are on their ship, if you will. I've used the ship panel thing off. A couple of times at night. Like how many how many people you're inviting on your ship get seasick? Have you taken that into account? Do you have the proper hydration for those people? The medical care for those people? You're not taking any of the details into account on the individuals involved on the other side of the camera. And I'll be the first to say, I come on here documenting what I do. I talk about what I do, how I do it. Show how I do it. And then tell you, take parts that work for you. Merle Haggard, my farewell to Elvis 8-track. Going to Utah, so for five dollars. So if you have a channel or you're going to make a channel, remember you have a responsibility to uphold.
We've got some Banana Republic lemons. Jeans. Petite jeans. Headed to California. Took an offer for $10 this morning on these. If you're watching this video just watch out for yourself when it comes to who you're watching and 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 i'm not saying don't watch those type of people but go into it realizing that even if they say they have all the answers they don't have all the answers because they don't have all the variables nobody will have all the answers because no one will have all the variables, especially when a platform is in the midst of a change and their variables are changing consistently, almost daily. So no one will ever have the correct answer 100% of the time. Or even 100% of the answer for you. It may happen, yes but it's probably not going to happen more times, a hell of a lot more times than it will happen. And you just got to remember that when you're taking in information from people. They don't always have your best interest in play. They're trying to earn money on YouTube. They're trying to, whatever the reasons, they're more personal based than could be more, per, could, I'm not going to say everybody, of course, but they could be more personal based. You got to kind of try to weed those, you know, look at each one in a, with a skeptical mind. There you go. I'm not bad mouthing anybody or I don't care. He said, I'm not even paying attention to anybody really anymore. So Whoever says what in the last, like, week and a half, I have no idea. <laughs> and I like it that way. I'm not going to watch somebody's video and then create my own video trying to counter whatever they're saying or whatever. You know, I'm giving you what I'm experiencing as I'm experiencing it and asking questions, you know, trying to answer the questions along the way. As... Let's go to the next one then. On the troll situation, it makes total sense to for me to for me to put up a fifty dollars, put a record up for fifty dollars first, not knowing where it is. I'm crazy enough to put it higher, and I think I did put it higher. To be honest, I don't remember for sure um, because I don't know. I might be leaving money on the table. Exactly. If you can't find a comp on something that on items that you can't find a cop a comp for, there are two ways to do it. Put it up for auction, which I personally don't trust auctions anymore, or just put it up at a crazy amount of money and wait for the offers to come in. And that's the way I do it. You can do it either way, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Hey, thank you, Wonderbag55, $10. Wow. Nobody's done that in a long, long, long time. Thank you. Uh, you say vinyl albums sales have increased every year for the past 17 years, correct? I believe it was 2019, maybe 2018, that sales on vinyl albums were at the highest ever. Album sales have increased every year since, including 2022. Yeah, and I made the comment the other day, I read an article, I think in the UK, CDs actually outsurpassed vinyl in 2023. So CDs are rising again too that means a new sales record is achieved every year from 2018 2019 through last year not th I th yeah i think yeah i don't know i didn't read it didn't say what the vinyl was and that's just uk anyway so you can't really take that as a whole uh whoever gave you grief needs to learn to read and is also not a nice human <laughs> uh james you are 
a great guy and I pay close attention to everything you have to teach about reselling. Keep up the great work and God bless. Feel the love and appreciation, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. And that's, and like I said before, like CDs that I put in storage that were like penny CDs on Amazon in 2012, 2010. I mean, those are the CDs I'm getting $10 for now. That's why I've never been afraid to throw stuff in storage. Um, Jan brought home some retail arbitrage from CVS, Christmas clearance stuff. And I know there's a lot out there, but instead of throwing it in storage, I just put it in my store and I put it at next year's pricing, basically. I don't expect it to sell until next year. And I'm hoping that it will sell at that at that price point, basically. Like I have no problem sitting on it, and that's part of the long tail business that I do. Like I don't I don't have a problem sitting on an item for so many years. My thing is, I wish eBay was like the way eBay used to be. I could track how much every year was making me because when you went into archives you could separate it by your store category where you cannot do that now and I would go in and say okay um say like it's 2022 and I look back at 2020 stuff and in 2022 the 2020 stuff still made me seventeen thousand dollars that year etc et so if I worried about sell-through rate and, oh, I should end those items because they've been up too long. Well, then that would have been $17,000 I would have missed out on if I did do that. Unfortunately, they since they changed, you can't really do that anymore, unfortunately. So I don't know what, um, how much a certain year is making me. I do know that I'm still selling a pretty good amount from every year I've listed. And that's what, when I talk about like foundation type of thing, that's what I mean. Like if you look at your business, like every year is different, like 2024 is a new year. So I'm building a new store, technically just a new category, but it's a new store. But I'm living off of, until I build that 2024 store up, I'm living off my 2023 store, my 2022 store, my 2021 store, and my 2020 store, and even some Scragglers from before that. So that's the way I kind of view it. Every year I'm building a new store and I'm living off of my past stores. So it's like, okay, how do I want to build this year's store? Am I going to stay pretty much on the same? Am I going to concentrate on something different? Like I've been trying to concentrate on more oddball stuff as opposed to just all, you know, music hats. Like I haven't put hats up in probably like a week. But I've put all kinds of oddball, weird stuff, Christmas stuff, small toys, knickknacks, blah, 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 up. And so I'm getting little sales straggling in on that. Uh, well, you hear me say that I put this up a couple days ago, et cetera, et cetera. So you hear when, is, when I put it up and when I sell it, if it sells within a couple of days. So you know what kind of stuff's selling when it sells if you're watching. I've got this Bahamas hat headed to Australia. Uh, sold for $13.50. So this year, at least right now, for January, I'm grabbing just oddball stuff. And putting it up. And I found the best way for me to do oddball stuff is, if you watch my videos, you know that I kind of have routines when it comes to shipping or uh, listing. Like I can break it down into three steps. What I found best for me with oddball stuff that's not consistently going in the same categories and stuff, um, I just got a generic blank template. I just times that by 10. I just take pictures of these 10 oddball things, throw them aside, make another 10, take another 10 pictures of these oddball things, throw them aside. 
And then I just go at them one by one, fill in the details, the pictures are already done, and just boom, boom, boom. That works best for me on the oddball stuff. But stuff like cassettes, it makes more sense just to do it, do the details first, set it aside, because I may have that cassette in my store already. Uh, when I, with oddball stuff, there's less chance I already have that item in my store. So with things like cassettes and hats, I want to check my store before I waste time taking a picture on it. So I do this first step first, the detailed step first, where it's just making the, the template detailed. And I do the picture last. Thirteen forty nine, perfect, perfect, perfect. Normal service resumed, moaning again. Huh? Comment to that. Hey, I've had problems at checkout this week as both a buyer and a seller. Is this problem worth moaning about? <laughs> I guess it's just a troll. I don't think I was moaning. I think I was just giving updates. But if you think somebody's moaning, you might want to look at, you know, fix yourself, man. Fix yourself, because you're not happy. Oh, uh, let's see here. That's kind of BS. If someone had a bad experience, they should be able to express that in a review. I bought lots of stuff on eBay where the seller was at fault. They shouldn't be able to remove a legitimate review. Somebody on an old video, how to get negative feedback removed. Uh, but that's what free returns are for, you know? So if you have free returns, you don't have to, you know, that's that's fixing the problem. So if you fix the problem, then I don't feel you should be you should uh, have to take on that negative. Like I'm dealing with the person now with that Bose system. They're in Puerto Rico. They're saying it didn't work. I'm like BS. So I'm like, well, open a return. Oh, guess what? They don't want to open a return. How about you just give me money back to get it fixed? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It got dinged up in shipping. Yeah, we'll open a return. So I'm I'm expecting a negative. Cause I'm not I'm not playing that scam game. I'm just not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. I have no problems getting negatives. Because I I take care of the people. So the majority the majority thankfully are still good people. <laughs> so I don't worry about the few bads here and there. All right, I guess that'll be all. I am out of here. Off to the post office. I've been cranky a little bit this morning, so I think I'm gonna make sure I get me something to eat while I'm out. And Courtney's starting this new thing where she's starting to dig in the trash. She's never done that. She acts like she's starving. Like she'll, she'll go under Jan's desk because Jan will put stuff in a baggie and take it to work and if she don't finish it at work she'll sit at her desk and finish it and she puts the baggie in her desk Courtney takes that baggie and takes it out and starts chewing it I'm like no <laughs> so I had to make Jan's so don't put that there anymore because it's a little trash can she just gets into it uh, alright uh, let's see where we're at since we had some cha-chings we are at 1045 where was I at like $90 or something uh, 155 right now. So, better than yesterday. So, that's good to see. The skates saved me yesterday. Uh, so, that was a nice little sell. Which, again, like I said in previous videos, if you do smalls, make sure you do keep some high dollar items in your store because one can save your day. And that's happened a few times. So, Alright, thanks everybody. I will see you all in the next video. Later.